So I'm Mark Berman. I'm the Gini Project Director. I'd like to welcome everybody to Madison, Wisconsin and to GEC 17. I would like to take a moment to thank our hosts, uh, the University of Wisconsin, and to thank uh, Parmesh and Lori for all the work they've done in organizing the GEC. We had you know, a wonderful session last night, as we often do, but you know, a great set of demos. Everything went very smoothly, and it's, you know, it's just always such a wonderful opportunity to see all the things that are going on placed into one, into one room at the same time. And of course, that puts a, a pretty heavy burden on our hosts. So, so thank you so much. We have two sessions this morning with a break in between. Uh, here's what we'll be doing. Um, we will have just some brief welcomes. And then you'll get some updates from the Genie Project Office on how we're doing against our Spiral 5 goals. Uh, this is about two-thirds of the way through Spiral 5. So we, we ought to have some good progress to report, and I'm glad to say that we do. Then we have two demonstrations. One is a relatively quick demonstration. This will be the uh, gimme and a lab wiki equivalent of the run a complete genie experiment demonstration that we saw uh, done with a different genie control framework uh, two GECs ago. And the, the point here is to see how simple it is to set up a relatively simple uh, genie experiment and to get a view of the progress in tool integration that we've had uh, over the past year. And I think you'll notice some very serious improvements that are going to make experimenters' lives much more pleasant. We'll take a break, and after the break, we'll come back and we'll have a, a live demonstration of genie stitching. Now, we've seen uh, stitching demonstrations before, uh, but not with the same level of robustness, not using a wide variety of uh, genie resources, and not so automated. So uh, Heidi and Louisa and Aaron will walk you through that and help to understand some of the implications and how this is going to guide our, our stitching development as we go forward. Uh, so we'll have a little bit of a demonstration. We'll have a little bit of a, of a technical deep dive uh, looking under the hood of what just happened in the demo. So that's, that's this morning's schedule. I'd like to take just a minute uh, to introduce uh, today's guest speakers. Um, Ian Robertson is the Dean of the College of Engineering uh, here at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. He's going to welcome us and he's going to take a few minutes to tell us about uh, work that's going on here at the college. And Keith Marzullo, who really doesn't need much of an introduction to, to this group, is uh, Division Director at SIZE CNS. Uh, he is a longtime friend of Jeannie and uh, he'll say a few words and then we'll come back with a, a Jeannie progress update. So, uh, Dean Robertson. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, on behalf of the <clears throat> College of Engineering and the University of Wisconsin at Madison, it's my pleasure to welcome you here to the 17th uh, Genie GEC uh, workshop. I'd also like to add a special welcome to colleagues, our old colleagues from the National Science Foundation. It's certainly good to see that they're here, so welcome. As I was actually thinking about these remarks, <clears throat> I was actually thinking back to my days at NSF and the love for acronyms. Now, I have to say that you managed to confuse me because you managed to get an acronym within an acronym, which even that's pretty challenging from an NSF point of view. Usually they like very simple ones, but the GEC where the G is for the genie gets really quite complicated. So maybe there's a, you have to get another acronym, but it did take me some time to figure that one out. But once I did start figuring it out though, <clears throat> I was actually, very interested to learn more about what Genie was about. And the conversation with Brian this morning uh, was quite fascinating because it, it rings quite well with what we are thinking of doing here on the college. 
And I'm hoping that uh, Parmish is actually going to be able to help us as we move forward and do some new things actually on our college. So what I thought I would do is actually just take a few moments just to tell you about what the College of Engineering <clears throat> is doing. Um, I've been here now since March. Uh, it's just been sort of a whirlwind of activity in the, in the five months that I've been here. But what I wanted to do is just tell you about a few of the new initiatives that we are actually working on. One of the things that we want to do is figure out how to do education innovation at both the undergraduate and the graduate level. Our idea is not to just bring more technology into the classroom. We don't consider that to be education innovation. We consider the use of the technology to be part of the innovation, but not the innovation in itself. The questions we want to answer is, what should we be teaching our undergraduates and our graduate students today in order to prepare them to go out into the world and address societal problems? It's a very different concept than saying, let's bring in more technology into the classroom. We want to figure out what we should be teaching them so that they're prepared to become leaders in the future. It's one of the initiatives that we have, and we're using some internal resources to fund uh, faculty ideas for how to change the undergraduate and graduate program. One of the other areas that we're looking at is also how do you actually spur new research activities in faculty and engineering? So one of the things that we're doing, again, is through use of internal funds, we've set up a, a research innovation group. And that group will actually start funding new research activities, not just within the College of Engineering, but actually across our campus. And we will use those internal resources to actually start those new projects. As you come around our campus, and I hope that you actually have some time to actually wander around the campus and see some of the changes. If you do, I'd encourage you to go and see the Wisconsin Energy Institute building. It's very nice. You could also go and see the Wisconsin Institute for Discovery, another new activity that we actually have on our campus. As part of the new activities that we're doing, one of the, ones, one of the new research areas that we funded is related to the Materials Genome Initiative here on our campus. This idea is to bring together three different groups, data people, people who do algorithm development, and people who do experiment, synthesis, and processing of new materials. We've committed up to one million per year for a five-year period to launch this new effort. We're hoping that that will then help us satisfy the president's goal of making and discovering new materials twice as fast and at half the cost. The idea is to make US industry much more competitive by giving them an advantage of new materials coupled with advanced manufacturing techniques to make new tools. Computational infrastructure is going to play a big part of this new initiative, and Parmish is one of the people that's going to be helping me actually set our future plans for what the computational infrastructure within the College of Engineering is going to actually look like as we move forward. So these are just two or three of the new things that we've embarked on in the sort of five months that I've been on campus. I'm hoping that as we go forward and as you come back here, Again, for one of, these, one of these events, I understand you do these every four months, and I was actually stunned to learn that that's something the NSF was doing. It's just a great idea that you're getting this much networking and interaction, and I'm hoping that you will be back here on our campus, and we can tell you more about the updates. I'm, I hope uh, you're going to have a very successful uh, conference, and I look forward to actually hearing the outcomes of where you're going to go next and how the University of Wisconsin, uh, Madison, and the College of Engineering can help further your goals. Enjoy your conference and uh, have a good week. Thank you. Thanks very much, Dean Robertson. So Keith and I were talking uh, just over breakfast about uh, the demo session last night, um, and I, I think I think he's going to have a lot of positive stuff to say. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. Good morning. Good morning. On behalf of the uh, National Science Foundation, I'd like to thank you for coming to the 17th 
uh, Genie Engineering Conference, uh, 17 of them. I'm, I'm, I'm truly amazed at how many good things that have been happening. It's great to see you all. Um, it's wonderful seeing the old hands of people who have been here who have been spurring, moving Genie along, doing the innovation that's part of Genie, as well as new people, the new researchers and educators that are here for the first time who are going to be doing great things as well. I've got to tell you, I love attending Genie Engineering Conferences. Um, I've been around a long time, and when I hear the word conference, I get a little jaded. But the Genie Engineering Conference is a very different kind of animal. Um, of course, the plenary sessions are fun because this is the time when you can see how Genie is moving forward. You can see where the innovation is really taking place. Um, uh, the working groups and the tutorials uh, where the new people are getting up to speed and where the code is being reviewed. Um, uh, this is in no way a, a conference. It's really a workshop in the true sense. And then, of course, the, uh, the demo session, which is my favorite. Um, I really enjoyed yesterday spending the time, as Mark said, in, the, in, the, in all the demonstrations, seeing all the work that's going on in cybersecurity. Genie can be a good test bed for that in terms of, of resilience and networking and fault tolerance. Um, uh, the, what's going on in terms of dashboarding, making Genie actually fun to use. Uh, that's really good to see. And also all the work that's going on in education. Um, that truly, there's a lot of things that are going on that I find innovative. <coughs> Um, uh, Genie is truly living up to its name, uh, Global uh, Environment for Network Innovation. And um, at this point, I'm, what I'm, I'm hoping to see more are things coming up in terms of the steps towards commercialization. Um, NSF has a set of programs that I encourage you to look into. Some of these programs are run in, in engineering through our AIR program, which are ways to take projects and partner them with centers. Uh, we have the i program which is a, a way of teaches researchers how to take their research ideas and think about business plans as yet another research problem. This has been going on for a couple of years and we're seeing great success in this. This is the next step for Genie as well as building this base and moving things forward. There are many good ideas that should be coming out in terms of commercialization and transition to practice. Um, if you haven't heard of these programs, if you don't know what I'm talking about, if these are acronyms that you've never heard of before, uh, come see Brian or come see me, and we'll be happy to, to give you all the information that I hope will allow you to go in that direction. Um, uh, there's much that we can do here. So in closing, uh, again, I want to thank you all for coming to this, uh, to this Gini Engineering Conference. Your efforts and your results are really the innovation that's driving this forward in what I think is one of the real success stories of the National Science Foundation. Thank you.